DeepMind has just released Alpha Tensor. This is the first time they applied the Alpha Zero algorithm to algorithmic discovery. The most outstanding result is that they are able to improve the efficiency of matrix multiplication by 10 to 20 percent compared to the most commonly used algorithms on GPU and TPU. Matrix multiplication is the basis of modern AI research. AlphaTensor itself is mostly matrix multiplication in a specialized transformer architecture. So here you have an example of AI potentially optimizing its own source code. Here are the most important results. AlphaTensor rediscovered the Strassen matrix multiplication algorithm by itself independently. It improved upon the Strassen algorithm in theory for the 4x4 case. And the most important result is that they achieved 10 to 20 percent improvement in practice for MATMAL on NVIDIA GPUs and Google TPUs. This does not refer to an asymptotic improvement, it's theoretical, but to better tailoring to devices and compilers. So there are actually different groundbreaking results which should not be confused. They outperformed in theory the Strassen algorithm for a particular case, the 4x4 matrix multiplication, so two 4x4 matrices multiplied with each other, and in practice they achieved an improvement by 10 to 20 percent with matrix multiplication on NVIDIA GPUs and Google TPUs. This speedup is due to the network being able to optimize for the particular hardware of TPUs and GPUs. So the network got feedback about the hardware performance with a certain algorithm and could change the algorithm to make it work better on this particular hardware. Let's have a look inside of the paper before we have a look inside of the code that was published by DeepMind. AlphaTensor is a deep reinforcement learning approach based on AlphaZero for discovering efficient and provably correct algorithms for the multiplication of arbitrary matrices. In order to apply the AlphaZero algorithm to matrix multiplication, they develop the Tensor game, and then they apply deep reinforcement learning to this game. In order to apply the Tensor game, they think of matrix multiplication as a game, and they do this in multiple steps. First of all, you should think about matrix multiplication as a Tensor, and this is what figure one is showing you here. Figure 1a shows you the multiplication between two 2x2 matrices. This tensor T2 displays which values have to be multiplied together and later summed together to form the values of the C matrix. So it shows you which values of B and A are multiplied together to get C1, C2, C3 and C4. This was an algorithm showing the figure 1 and B and C. B shows it in a classical form C is a tensor form of the Strassen algorithm. If you look at it carefully, you can see that the first column of U and V represent the first equation, the M1 equation. You take A1 and A4, B1 and B4, add them together and then multiply the sum together. And you can figure about this step by step. Each of the columns of U and V represent one of the steps to get the intermediate values of M. And then after that, W should see how to multiply together all these intermediate values. So then you have to think about the rows. This is a very important thing. This step-by-step -step approach of coming up with the intermediate results of the matrix multiplication, then putting them together, this is exactly what tensor game is. Each of the steps of U and V, each of the columns of U and V, represent one action of the agent in the game later. And the agent makes one action after the other to time. It is a very important part of understanding this entire algorithm. Each of the columns of U and V represent one of the actions that the agent is taking. So in this case there are seven actions taken and then with W you multiply the intermediate results together. One difference between Alpha Tensor and Alpha Zero in Classic is that Alpha Tensor has a much larger action space. So you can imagine for very large matrices the action space is very large. There's very many possible values you can multiply together. With AlphaTensor the network outputs a probability distribution 
for u, v, and w. This is different from alpha zero, where there is a probability distribution over all the possible actions that can be taken. Another way to think about this is, imagine you have a one byte, eight bit output. This eight bit represents 255 possible values. With alpha zero, you would have 255 outputs. Alpha tensor, you only have eight. So they call this sampled alpha zero. The notation they use is that T of n represents the the tensor of matrix multiplication of two nx n matrices. In this notation here, they take a sum over the rank and they perform all of the operations of the tensor. So these operations are the same as shown in the figure one. The rank is equal to the number of steps that are performed in the tensor game. The power of the Strassen algorithm is that it can be applied recursively to larger matrices. So the algorithms discovered here, even if they are for a specific matrix size, like 4x4 or 2x2, can also be applied to larger matrices by using recursion in a similar way that Strassen's algorithm does. In each step, the agent selects a UV and W triplet, which decides how the data of the matrices are computed in the algorithm. The idea is to start out by setting the input to the target tensor. This tensor here tells you which values you have to multiply together to get the matrix multiplication. This is the same as what you see up here in A, which is this tensor here. And the idea is that you want to go back from this. You want to perform so many operations that you end up with a zero tensor. And then you can play back all the operations and you can come back with the original tensor you had. So that the operations you perform on the have the identical computational result as if you would do a classical matrix multiplication. It's good to keep in mind that these tensors can generally perform many different operations on matrices. In order to encourage the network to find the lowest rank or the shortest path to the correct result of matrix multiplication, they have a negative reward for each step that's performed. Now, most of the time, the game is going to terminate with a non-zero tensor, so it will not find the correct combination of moves to set the tensor to zero, and then there will be an additional negative reward. So it's good to keep in mind that they set a maximum rank, so that's the maximum amount of operations you perform on the input matrices. Now just if you didn't know already, Alpha Zero achieved superhuman performance on a wide variety of games, Go, Chess, Shogi, and here they just repeat that they use sampled Alpha Zero, this is what they described before, to deal with the large action space that exists. This algorithm one here is very important together with figure one. They really describe how the tensor game works. Here you see basically the actions that are being taken by the agent. It's a set of G, U, V, and W vectors. You have a certain rank. The rank here is simply the number of steps your agent performs in the game. And here you simply see that for each of the steps, you apply the U and the V on the input matrices A and B, and then with the weights in W, you perform the summing up of these values. The neural network architecture that they use is transformer based. They use a special version of the transformer with axial attention for multiple grids. They also use some of the symmetries in the data, for example, that the tensors are invariant to slice B ordering. To train their network, they also use data augmentation and ways to increase the size of the data set. One of them is synthetic demonstrations. Generally, it is NP hard to find the tensor decomposition, but you can do the thing in reverse. So you just come up with steps U, V, and W, you get the finished tensor equivalent, and then you get train the network on trying to get the same steps for the tensor decomposition. And they use both a supervised loss for this and standard reinforcement learning. 
as another approach to data augmentation, they do a change of basis. For even more data augmentation, they also change the order of the actions of the agent. Alpha tensor can be used not only on the real numbers, but also on different rings, like Z2 here. This brings them from abstract algebra. Essentially, Z2 is the ring of the integers, but at every operation you perform modulo 2. Therefore, the highest value is 1, when you have the binary values 0 and 1. In figure 3 in the paper, they show that their method of alpha tensor is able in every single case to match or even beat the current best state-of-the-art approach to matrix multiplication. So these are all the co possible combinations of matrix sizes. This is the currently best known rank, and this is the these are the two ranks that Alpha Tensor has achieved. Alpha Tensor here is split up on two different ranks of abstract algebra. This one is the standard one with real numbers and standard multiplication and addition. This one here is modular in the Z2 space. So this ring, every operation is performed with modulo 2. So the highest possible value is 1, and that's only 0 and 1. And you can see that especially here it's able to improve over the current best known state of the art with two multiplication steps. Now these are all theoretical results, but they have also tried to improve the results in the real world by tailoring the algorithm to currently existing hardware, particularly NVIDIA GPUs and Google TPUs. And for this, they have given the network an additional reward that is based on the runtime on a NVIDIA GPU or Google TPU. It's able to outperform Strassen as it is optimized on this particular hardware. It appears that Alpha Tensor is able to use XLA grouping to improve the result. Let's have a look at the own discussion in the paper. So one of the things they mention is that Alpha Tensor can be used with many complex rewards. So you could think about the stability, maybe the energy consumption. So you could create novel algorithms based on very specific demands. So if you want your algorithm to be very energy efficient, Alpha Tensor could create an algorithm for you. You just have to give it a reward for it. If you want to avoid certain maybe less stable operations, you can also give it an, a reward for this. So you can optimize any metric you can think of as long as you can come up with some reward for it. Let's talk about the far-reaching implications of matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication is used in so many tasks, so many high-demand computations, in particular artificial intelligence. It's very interesting to see AI improve matrix multiplication if itself it uses matrix multiplication. So you really see here an element of self-improvement by AI. So what's my view on this? I think that on the one hand it's very interesting to have an AI that is able to improve its own optimization, to improve its own code in a sense. And I think in the future we will see a lot more of this, and we could see a rapid self-improvement of AI systems. On the other hand, I think there's also some critique here. I think, for the most part, they have just been able to slightly optimize the instructions that are executed on the GPU. I do wonder to which extent this would actually work, and how would it compare to very optimized systems that already exist? Will this actually still yield an improvement? Of 10 to 20 percent, will it yield any actual improvement? So it would be interesting to see if this actually gets implemented and we can really make a measurement on a real world task. DeepMind has also released some of their code. So they have actually released the algorithms that Alpha Tensor created and they've also released the benchmarking for the NVIDIA V100 GPU. You can look at the algorithms that Alpha Tensor created in the Collab notebook. So what do you think about Alpha Tensor? 